Let's just lift up our hands one more time, shall we? Father, we come before you right now in this atmosphere, O oh God, of worship and praise. Lord, knowing that you are here and we're asking you, O oh God, to do what you, we can't do. We're asking you, O oh God, by the Spirit, by your Spirit, to come and move on us, O oh God, and in us and through us. So, Father God, I thank you right now. I pray, O oh God, that you would do that today. Hear my prayer, and I pray that you would answer it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, so good to be with you again. Um, I want to speak to you this morning about a double portion. We're coming into a time and a season that we just can't hear and hear and hear, but we've got to become activated. No matter how old we are or how young we are, God is activating his church. And when the Holy Spirit came upon Pentecost, it came upon everybody. They were all filled with the same measure, the same power. They become kings and priests of the high calling of God. There was no generals in such or corporals. Everybody was moved upon. And God moved upon them. And in the midst of darkness, in the midst of uh, you know, problems that they encountered in Jerusalem, uh, which was really as bad as probably it is now, but they moved out and there was a sound. And God is wanting to bring a sound to us. And it's not so much a sound that we hear in our ears. It may be, but it is a sound that comes upon the atmosphere, changes us and propels us forward. And I want to encourage you that uh, we are going to do that in Jesus' name. And if we don't do it, someone else will. So I say, God, use me, use me, use me, use me this morning in Jesus' name. You know, in John chapter 8, it talks, Jesus is actually sharing. And uh, one of the biggest obstacles that every one of us has to get over, and that is a religious spirit. It's so easy to have, a, you know, define our relationship with Jesus in what we know. And, uh, you know, and how much we know. And, uh, and we can argue about those things. And we can see probably other different uh, streams of people that may not think the same way as we think. And, it can become an argument. And Jesus here in, 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 in John 8, he's, he's teaching, and the Pharisees bring in this woman who's been an adulterer. And they bring her in and they, they drag her in. And these Pharisees, they look religious. They acted religious. You could tell that they were prayers. They had their prayer shawls on. And it's not much different to sometimes our day when we uh, act out our Christianity. We haven't really touched a world yet that needs our help and direction and leadership. But it's by His Spirit. Yes, they can have everything right, but without His Spirit, it's all wrong. And it's all dead. And I don't know how you feel, but I feel... Every day, I need more. I really need more. I cannot just rely upon maybe some of the stories I'll tell you today, which are real and, and amazing, but it's not really in the story. It's in now. Because now faith is. It's right now. It, this is the moment that we live in right now. And so he's talking there, and they said, you know, this woman needs to be stoned. And in their day, in their law, that was probably true. But Jesus didn't look at them. He just turned his head and they looked very right in what they were saying and very strong in what they were saying. But he just drew, in the, he just drew, drew out. And I think what he was drawing, I don't, you know, everybody's got their little idea what they were drawing, but I think he was saying to this lady, I've got a destiny for you. Australia's got a destiny. And we're of the generation that says, you know, uh, that, uh, that, you know, Wigglesworth prophesied the great south land of the Holy Spirit. But I want to ask you, do you really believe it? Or are you just saying it? Because you see, God is wanting us to move into a new era, a new place where we will be activated and changed for life. I want to be changed for life. I don't want to just have a, a message for you this morning uh, that may be okay but it's not okay just to, you know, just to look right. Because the problem with looking right, these guys, they had stones in their hands. 
And I want to encourage you, don't, have, don't be critical. Just walk through it. Walk through all the storms. Don't ask why, you know, why people are like this and like that and argue with them. Just walk through it. Become the answer. And instead of holding your stones, just open your hands and say, I want more. So just open your hands right now. Father, we're asking you for more. We're asking you for more. We open our hands to you. We don't close our hands. We open our hands to you today and say, give us more, give us more, give us more. I'm going to take, take you to Kings right now. And uh, we're going to see a little journey here. And I'll tell some stories, but... The journey is about Elijah and Elisha. In Kings chapter 2, verses 1 to 14. And I won't really read it, I'll just, because I, I can see that you're well adapted to what I'm talking about, and I'm just going to break in on scriptures. Because this young man, he wasn't a religious man, but he was a hungry man. Because he realized that Elijah was the move of God. He realized that Elijah was carrying something that no one else could carry. He was carrying a move of power and authority over his life. He was the one that raised the dead. He was the one that saw the, 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 jaw, the oil of, uh, you know, in the jar you know, filled and filled and filled. He, he saw so many thing, things happen. In amongst you know, the, the dips and ups and downs of life. But he was the one that was the carrier in a, in a very uh, dry land spiritually. And there was a lot against him. And it seems like if we look with our naked eye, there's a lot against us. But I want to say there is a host with us. It's called heaven. And heaven wants to come down. And heaven wants to demonstrate. And heaven is eager for you to call upon the power of God and the power of Jesus' name. And he, this man, Elisha, he's hungry for God. And he said, I want that. I want that. I want to carry the legacy. I want to carry on. I want to carry on. You see, and if we don't take that, that, that seriously, we will not have the legacy to release into our family, into our generation. Because every one of us has got a story that we can release into uh, the power of God in, through our prayers and through our, uh, our substance. And he wanted this power so badly. He was willing to pay the price. You see, there is a price because we've been bought with a price. We, we are not now owned by just doing what we want to do. We are now owned under the presence of God. And there comes an obedience in that. And that's where God will start to speak to us. God starts to speak as we, are, we, are, we become obedient to listening, not just reading the Word of God and not just praying, which are all important, but what is He saying to me? What, what, what am I going to do today? I mean, I know pastors um, all across the nation, they really don't know quite what they're going to do today because they just don't know. It can be actually a, quite a lazy job. Just go and have a cup of tea with someone and cheer them up. But what are we going to do? I remember I was in a prayer meeting uh, with my wife and we had a, um, a note to pray for a man in Sydney that, that was dying and he wasn't going to live. And uh, we just prayed for him and we did what we're supposed to do, and we believe God. But that night when I went to bed, I couldn't get this man's name out of my brain. And it was just going over. And Pat just jumped out of bed, and by 5.30 in the morning, I was on my way to Sydney to pray for a man I've never seen before. And on the way down, I was talking about Jesus to people. When I got into the cab, I was talking about Jesus, and the man gave him the two-ups and told me to go and get knotted. But it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I arrived at the hospital, and they asked me who I was. And we'd never be ashamed of the gospel. Never be ashamed of what you're called to do. And I told the story to unsafe people, doctors. I said, well, I, I, was just, I didn't say I was a pastor. I didn't say, you know, you know, how great the church is. I just said, well, I'm a Christian. I said, well, we're praying for this man. And I and I have a burden on my heart to come down here. They said, you come from Brisbane just to pray for a man? I said, yes, sir, I have, very politely. They just put the red carpet out for me. They were telling everybody. And I, and I went into this place where this guy was, and he's laying there, and it's pretty obvious that he was on his last legs. 
and I prayed for him. And then I left. Didn't see anything physical. But unknown to me, 8 o'clock the next morning, he was up and he was gone. He was free. That was seven, that, listen, listen, that was seven years ago. Seven years ago. Two years ago, I had a phone call from this man that was in trouble overseas. It was him. And he told me the story and he said, uh, I didn't know who to turn to and you left the card there on the table. So I rang you. He said, if you're willing enough to come down by on an air trip, I'm going to ring you again. In the last two years, I've probably rang him twice every single day, every day, seven days a week. He got himself in a bit of trouble, not really because of what he did wrong, but some, some, we won't go into that, some things. And I've been helping him. But he had an experience that started to change his life. And now we, we talk about Jesus and we're praying and, you know, he, he's, he's really got it. He's really, you know, holding on to the scriptures of God and, and, and working through and working through his life. And it's amazing. You never know where that takes you. But it was important to listen to God. Not just to pray for him, but to do what God told him to do. And so that's what took place there. You see, there is a, it's, it's very valuable to do, to, to exercise what God tells you to do. Have you ever heard something and you thought, oh, that's good, I'll remember that in the morning and you never do it? Every one of us has done that. But you need to write it down. You need to, you know, do something about it. And the contents of this request that Elisha was asking, he said, I want a double portion. But really what he wanted was that, that power that he saw in Elijah. Because he said, without that power, my nation, my generation will go to hell, will be lost. And he was so hungry for that power. And it's not power to make you look good. It's actually a power that causes you to actually love into people's lives. I had a phone call yesterday from, um, from India, from my church leader in India, Pastor AJ, and he was in a rickshaw. And um, uh, there was a man sitting in the back of the rickshaw, and they stopped to talk to me. And I said, who's the guy in the back? He said, oh, he's the owner of the rickshaw. He's a Muslim man. And uh, I said, well, are you driving it? He said, yeah. He said, he let me drive it. He said, but he's, he's just coming along to, to teach me how to drive it properly. So I said, let me talk to him. So I said, thank you so much, sir, for letting my friend drive your rickshaw. And he, he's like this, you know, Muslim guy. And um, I said, you know, I said, um, I said, you're very generous to do that. I said, God loves generous people. And, uh, you know, I then went into talking to him about how God loves him and how Jesus died for him. And I led him to Jesus in the back seat of the, of the rickshaw. Here I am in Queensland, looking out at people surfing at the same time in a dump of a place in a rickshaw. A Muslim man is holding him up like this. And he looked into the, the camera of the FaceTime and he said, thank you, in his language. Thank you. I said, no problem. No problem. It's okay. But you've got to learn the ways of how we need... We need a generation that's been touched by God. You can pray all you like and look, look, put your head down and be quiet. And you know, but if you've got stones in your hands, you'll never get past, you know, just your problems. You gotta let go and let the love of God that shed abroad in your heart start to work out of you, so that you can become what God wants you to become. And really, His request was not just to be a big shot but to take hold of the, 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 the anointing of the Holy Spirit so that he would become an ambassador in his generation, in his hour and his time for his nation. 
and become the great man of God that Elijah was and to really ask him what he was saying, I want what you're carrying. I really want what you're carrying. You know, Jesus said in John 17 verse 18, just as the Father sent me, so I will send you. And you've got to ask the question, how did, how did the Father send Jesus? Well, he sent him with an anointing. He was all man and yet all God, but he sent him with anointing. He was a prophet, he was a priest, he was a king. And when he spoke, it wasn't just an argument to the mind. It, it, was, it was touching the soul of people, the spirit of people, and it was everything, it was bringing a conviction. It wasn't a condemnation, but it was a bringing a conviction upon people. And they were, they were feeling full of the love of God, of the love of God. And like this little lady, she's laying on the floor. I don't know whether she really had clothes on or what, but it doesn't matter. But, you know, when everybody had gone, when everybody dropped their stones because of that conviction and they walked away with their heads down in shame, Jesus looked at this little lady and said, come on, follow me. And he put down his hand. And she stood up and she followed him. And she carried that same power and that same love. And we need to have that in our hearts today. This church is poised. But the, the conference that we went through, uh, as small as it was, it was a big conference. It was an amazing conference. It was absolutely a phenomenal conference because the anointing of heaven was there. God touched me. You know, I, I cried sometimes. I, I heard testimonies from young guys. It was just amazing. We we have got to be keep patting them on the back. They're fantastic guys. They're carrying something, and they're going to carry more. They're going to carry more and more and more because there are people that are going to be touched by heaven itself. You see, what he was asking for was a spirit of faith. Come on, faith, faith, faith. We've got to get faith into our spirit. We've got to get faith, get faith upon our lives. We've got to call upon God for faith. Lord, give me faith. Help my unbelief. And there are sometimes I look at things, I say, this is impossible. Yes, it is impossible, but all things are possible when you're standing there and you know you're supposed to be there. Whenever I go to a country, sometimes it's not really great. No, I mean, Pat and I was in uh, you know, Egypt one time and we went to a garbage city and it was uh, pretty, uh, you, know, all, you know, Pat's taking photographs because you can't sit in the chair, you've got to hide underneath the thing, you know, to get there. And I said, put that thing in. She said, you'll be happy when I finish. You know? and so she, click, 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 click. she clicks all the time. You know? Anyway, um, so we, we get to this place and uh, you know, um, they said, stay there a minute. And when it's all clear, I want you to come out and just go straight through that door. And we went down three stories, like three into, into a gully. And there were some believers down there. Really amazing. People that love God. Really love God. There was this one lady, she was blind in her eye. She was blind from birth in her eye. And that day, in that meeting, Jesus healed that lady. And her eye opened up. And I remember going back a year later and seeing her. And, the, the, you know, her eyes opened. You know, and you know what, what happens? It's like she becomes your sister. It's like, it's like it's, it's very close and you can't even speak their language. It's amazing. It's just wonderful. It's a phenomenal thing to know that God, you see, you, you have this privilege, with a hunger you have privilege to see God move. With, with stones in your hands and just knowing the word of God, you've got nothing. All you've got is, oh, well, I know that. You know, it's clear. But I want to say this, that, you know, in Ezra, uh, chapter 1, verse, uh, chapter, uh, sorry, one, uh, chapter 1, verse 5, it says, and God stirred the hearts of the priests and the Levites and the leaders. Okay, they, it, it was stirred. They were stirred. Every one of us need an encounter. Come on, every one of us need an encounter. You know, my heart's prayer is, I want to encounter God. I want to encounter you. It's no good me just reading my Bible anymore. I know, you know, enough scripture anyway, uh, enough theology anyway. It's, I want to encounter the living God, the living God, the living God. I want to walk into that resurrection. I do not want to look at the cross I want to go through the cross. Come on, he's paid the price. And Jesus said in John 16, verse 8, he said these words, I'm going to go away, but I will send you. I will send you. I will send you. I will send you. I will send you my comforter. And he has power to comfort you in the storm. I've been in places where, where you know, in a, in a little rickety old hotel where I've actually got the, the, the you know, the, 
off the bed and off the gear up against the door because it's just, just, in, it's just a dangerous area. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I doing here? You know, my knees having fellowship, you know. I go, what am I doing? You know, but I've got to get back and I've got to go, God, I need this encounter right now. I need it. You know, I'll be no good. You know, I tell you, I've had a lot of fear around my life sometimes. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, fear is not just like I fear something. It's, it grips you, you know. And I've put the, you know, the furniture up against the wall, up against the thing, you know, just to make sure I can have a nice sleep at night. Faith. We've got to learn to trust the presence. Come on. The presence of God. We've got to learn to trust the presence of God and the power of God in our world that we live in. It's ab he's in absolute control right now. He's in absolute control. Come on. He's in the darkness as, as, as it is. It's dark. And bring it on. Let it become dark because you are the light of the world. And if you can actually bend into God, if you can actually, actually lean into God and just wait there, don't pray, just wait there and start to see and start to look and start to wait upon the presence of God, He will turn up. He will turn up. He will turn up. He will turn up. Sometimes we're just bogging ourselves. Oh, I found another yeah, Hebrew. Oh, it says this. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. If you will just wait upon the presence of God, let Him touch you. Let him touch you with his presence. Let him touch you. Let him, let him encourage you with his presence. And then when you read the word of God, he'll give you something for somebody. Because Paul's writings, all of Paul's writings, you know, you're seated in heavenly places. He's telling you, man, if you knew where I'm seated, come on, you are seated there too in heavenly places. You know, the same power that raised Christ from the dead. I'm talking to your church. This is what's in me now. I once was... Saul, but now I'm Paul. God's moved over my life. Something's happened. It was the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, chaka daka. You can, you, I, I'm in some churches and they shout. Don't shout too loud. Shout. Oh, it's so exciting. Third, second thing he wanted was a, was a spirit of obedience. Come on, young people. It's great to have all those things. But you must be obedient. 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 Obedient to God. Obedient to God. You see, the, the, he was a king and a priest of the high calling of God. Priest speaks of holiness. Learn to say no. Learn to look at something and say, no, I'm not even going to be, I'm not going to be, no, no, not that way. Look at a movie, no. Look at this, no. Turn to God. Let God purify your heart. Let God purify you. Do you know up in the mountains where I go, and the guys come home, and their hands are full of oil and slush and stuff. Do you know what they wash their hands with? The blood of the lamb. And they put the hands in the blood, and they wash it, and it takes out all the grime. It takes out everything. Unbelievable. Eh? There's power, power. Wonder working power in the blood. Come on, buddy. In the blood. Their blood. It has power to cleanse us. And we all need it sometimes. Otherwise, the stones we are holding on to, and what we do is we start to grip them. Because maybe of insecurity and rejection, we hold on to them. Let go. And let God move. Become obedient. And he asks the spirit of courage. Courage, courage, courage. We need courage right now. This is where we need courage right now in our generation to rise up. If every Christian in Australia rose up right now, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, there would be, it would be amazing, amazing what would happen. And the spirit of courage. Someone's got to stand up. Someone's got to walk into a hospital and say, you aren't going to die. I've done it hundreds of times, hundreds of times. Maybe more than hundreds and hundreds. And seen people healed and people set free. In Jesus' name. The spirit of courage. And he wanted that spirit of faith and obedience and courage. The courage to go into places. And I go into a, a place, 20,000. The road literally is no, no more than about that, that distance. And you have to walk in there with a, with a guard around you, people that will look after you. And then we stand on a, on a top of a housetop and we call out to people and the crowds come. And we preach. And we preach simple. 
that Jesus Christ rose again. He died for your sins. He, he, he's your healer. He's your deliverer. And then we call people to the power of that word. And as they come, you can have courage. And sometimes my brain says to me, you know, they're not going to get healed. They're not, there's nothing's going to happen. And I say, Lord Jesus, I'm standing here. I've got the spirit of faith on me. I am obedient to what you told me to do. I'm standing here right now. There's mafia there with their guns. They don't like you because they're controlling the people. They're doing this. They're doing that. But we're standing there preaching the gospel. And let me tell you, that when, that, when that call goes out, the, the rush of people, you know why? Because they want, they've got nothing else. They've got nothing, they've got nothing, they've got nothing. And when you have, when you have courage, you know, courage, it, it, it turns on, it's not just a good idea, I'm saying you're going to be healed. I'm saying you're going to come. And maybe not everybody gets healed, but you've got to say it as though everybody's going to get healed. Everybody's going to get touched. Everybody's going to get changed. You say it in such a way that it, you know, the mafia can get healed today. It doesn't matter who it is. You can come. Come! Right now! No music, and they come. And the power of God is amazing because of hunger. Come on, church. We can do this. I am, I am seriously believing that we can do this. We can do this. We can do this. Amen to you too, Bill. That's awesome. I remember in the, you know, and not recycling things, but we never asked people to come to the meetings Pastor Neil carried that anointing at that time, and people. I saw busloads come. You know, most people come late for church. There were busloads, 60 people in a bus coming from Toowoomba, coming from, you know, Rockhampton Way or somewhere. Buses coming in, thousands of people coming in. Why? It wasn't because of our preaching, believe me. And as much as, you know, I respect Neil's preaching, and, and as great as it is, it was because of the power of the Holy Spirit. It was because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And he was there. He was there. He was there. He was there. And no one wanted to leave. We stayed there night after night sometimes. In the mornings, we'll be there early, and the power of God was there. You see, that's what we need again. We need a fresh move of God. We've got to have a fresh move of God. That changes the whole world. And that lets the stones go. It's beyond Elijah's ability to give Elisha that. It's beyond him. But he said, if you can see it, if you can see me, if you can see what's on me, you can have it. And when that takes place, there's always the naysayers. The prophets come along and say, oh, don't do that. No, look, you know, don't have to go that far. I mean, goodness me. Don't get too excited. Get excited. Get excited. When you're excited and smiling, it's amazing who you attract. There's no fear when you're smiling. Okay? We should have a constant smile on our face. I was on an airplane one time and I was sitting there and there was a Japanese person sitting next to me, and, and I noticed there's a right behind me, there's a, lots of Japanese people behind me, right? Anyway, I was trying to eat my dinner, and he was moving his arms around. And, you know, every time I tried to put some food in my mouth, he, his hand would go up, you know? And I said, Excuse me, sir, uh, can you put your hand down? You know, and because he couldn't speak English very well. And he said, oh, okay. Anyway, up it comes again, you know? And I said, Do you know who I am? You know? And he goes, No? You mm, priest. He goes, oh, a priest. I said, so, so he gets up on his seat, he looks around, and he talks to about 25 people. You know, priest, 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 priest. So, so I thought, well, this is my chance. <laughs> they can't go anywhere. <laughs> so I ended up praying for them all. And uh, when I got off the plane, they're all waiting for me, and they wanted my autograph. So I gave it to them. <laughs> Yeah, you got you know, but you gotta have courage. Even in that, you gotta have courage. You know, but don't get sort of too, you know. Oh well, I pray right now. No, no, no. Just do what you like, you know. But choo, it's the power. It's the presence of God. It's the presence of God. And you see, this guy, he wanted so much the power. 
He wanted to walk in the power, but he must have the spirit of faith and obedience and courage and come against the opposition that speak and say, you don't have to go that far. Come on, there's another meeting down the road somewhere. Come on, don't lose each other. Stick together. Come on, work together. And this condition of, of this request uh, was that he wanted his world changed. And my world, I want it changed. I want to change my world. And I know I can't change it by just, you know, having stones in my hand. I was coming back from Perth and there was a, a guy from the Bandidos. He was in the airport and you couldn't see his face for cats and he was a really big guy. And I mean, he was solid, you know. And he had just a singlet on, you know, shorts and, you know, he let everybody see his muscles, you know. And I thought, I wonder where he's going, you know. Sure enough, it was to Brisbane. And I thought, I wonder where he's sitting. Sure enough, it was next to me. <laughs> and uh, I was in the middle and he was on the window and he was so big, I was like this, you know. And I thought, and there was a girl sitting here like this, and I thought, strike, it's about five hours sitting next to this guy. So I thought, well, how can I talk to this guy? And uh, I just felt, you know, just get out your Bible. So I just got out my Bible, put it up so he could see it. I just read him, you know. And he's swearing and, you know, just didn't give a flick about who was there, you know. And then about half an hour in, he gives me a nudge. You know, and then he knocked me across the other side of me. He, he gives me a note. And he says to me, he says to me, uh, I bet you're in a secret, mate, with a few choice words. I said, what? He said, uh, he said, every night I ask, not to God, not to send me to hell. I said, that's a great prayer. I said, that's a great prayer. I said, that's amazing. So uh, the back of the seat with um, you know, the table that comes down, you know, I said, just imagine that's your life right now. I said, what's it like? He said, you wouldn't know about it. He said, I'm a bandido, you know, and he told me some stuff. And I said, that's your life, man. There it is. But I said, there's someone that can change your life. I said, it's not just reading a Bible. But I said, it's the person of the Bible. I said, he's alive. He died for your sins. I told him straight. I just had my Bible out. I preached the message to him in about five minutes flat. And I said, I'm going to show you something. And I just clicked the top of the table, you know, and it came down. I said, where is your path now? He said, it's not there, it's just the back of the chair. I said, that's what he'll do for you. I said, he won't just forgive you. He will, he, he will, as far as the east is from the west, he said, you will be free. And I said, now the question is that you told me all this rough stuff you've been doing, how tough you are. I said, how good are you if I pray with you now? He said, I want you to. And I prayed with him. And as I prayed with him, this guy with all his tats, big as he is, I mean, his hand just, I didn't see my hand, you know, he, but I prayed. And he found Jesus Christ. And the girl sitting next to me, anyway, he had these problems with his eyes. He's been beaten up. And he's uh, sort of uh, like um, a bit blind. He, you know, he wasn't blind, but, you know, had problems. You know? Anyway, I said, let me pray for your eyes. And this girl next to me, she was um, Wayne Alcorn, with the AOG um, a, um, PA, sitting there. She's been listening to me all the time. And she leans over and she says, Sir, she said, I was blind in my eye and I was prayed for before I was a Christian. That's what happened to me. And Jesus can heal you today. So the two of us prayed for his healing. Come on. Come on. doesn't matter. They're human beings. They're not that tough. They got hands and feet, and they ain't got much between their ears sometimes, but we are carriers of the Spirit. Come on, we are carriers of the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on. We are carriers of the power of God. It is the power, the power of God, the power of God that raises people from the dead even. I was in one village, all by myself, and these Hindu people, they took me down to this, they took me down to a, um, a man that was skin and bone, literally. And, and as I was walking down through the village, the crowds got round me. And I thought, what am I doing to myself here? You know, what, what's happening? And I said, I want you to pray for this man. And so they took me down there. And I went in there. And they were looking out through the windows and all that. I said, clear out. I'm just like, I don't know what Jesus said, but I thought it was good anyway. I said, out, out, come on, out. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. <laughs> they all get out. You know, they're all waiting outside. Anyway, the family's in there. 
I pray for this man and he's dribbling in this place. I pray for him. Nothing, absolutely nothing happened. Anyway, I talked about Jesus, gave their life to Jesus, the family. And I said, I'm preaching just down the road here, just down the road. And just keep in contact with me. He just lands. Sunday morning I'm preaching and uh, they come in through the doors and they had this man strapped up in an old wooden chair with rope around him, rope around his arms, rope around his chest so he wouldn't fall out and they're carrying him like this in to the service. And I said, what the heck is this? And I said, what are you, what's, what's happening? He said, we want him baptised before he dies. I said, ah, oh, if the water hits him, mate, it'll be before you. So they brought three churns of water in. And I thought, that one of those is enough. No, 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 Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because the pastor said so. So I, I couldn't really lift the thing up. I held it, and another two people held this thing. And we just poured it over him. We were soaking. We poured it over him. And I baptized him. And he went back home. And I thought, that guy would be dead before he gets home. I flew out on Monday. But unknown to me for two years, that man was resurrected on Monday and walked down through his village Monday and got the strength back. Don't look with your naked eye. Just keep faith in your heart. Just keep believing. Because when you believe, when you stand upon and you rely upon and you trust God, anything can happen. Absolutely anything can happen. Absolutely anything can happen. Anything can happen. And you see, there is a call to identify our priorities right now. There's a, there's a real call to the church. You know, I believe, Pastor Neil said it, Tuesday night is going to be the best night. It's the important night. It, it's, a, it's, it's, the, it's, it's literally the place where the oil is poured out. It's, it's very important. And there's fresh oil poured out. And when that fresh oil is poured out and you, uh, you, know, you receive that, what you'll do is you'll see, you'll see this place just double. You'll see it treble. And, and you'll see, because of that, you'll see, you'll see that the power of God will be upon that and miracles will take place. And it's not just physical miracles, but miracles where people will be healed in their hearts. Our nation is broken right now. But you've got to come and pray. And it's absolutely imperative that we do. And you see, the opportunities that we have to make this resolve, to make this happen, is, is really to say, use me. Use me, use me, use me. So he goes to Gilgal, as I'm slowing down now. He goes to Gilgal. Gilgal speaks of beginnings. It's the promise. It's before they went into the promised land. It's where they were uh, uh, circumcised. And God came again to them and touched them and renewed them. Uh, look, I, we, we, it's not, we're not off the mark, but I want to be renewed. I cannot, I cannot not just have an experience without being renewed in it. That means I've got to bow to it. I've got to give myself to it. Renew yourself. Uh, prayer meaning renew yourself. And um, then the second place they went to was Bethel. It was the place of dreams. Many people got great dreams, and I love dreams. It's okay. But at Bethel, which was the beginning, which was Bethlehem, it was, it was where the beginning, it was, the, it was the smallest town. Micah says that it was the smallest town. Prophesied hundreds of years before Christ came. It was Micah. and said, out of you, this little town of Bethlehem. Ephraim is another word for it. It's going to come the ruler, the Messiah. Prophesying. Pat and I went to Bethlehem, and there was, they were saying there was only eleven houses. You know, when when Mary and Joseph arrived there, only eleven houses. No wonder they had to go into, you know, the back blocks there. Nothing there really, but heaven descended upon Jacob in the beginning there. Genesis twenty-eight. Heaven came down. And he said, I didn't even know it. Come on, 
When you see the times of darkness, know one thing, that God is going to restore his church. It's going to be at the, up the top of the hill and not down the bottom. We are the head and not the tail. It's going to be higher than any mountain, the Bible says. Any mountain. And we can be a part of it. But if we've got stones in our hands, we ain't going to do it. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. And then they go to Jerusalem, or Jericho, the place of victories. And I've been telling you about some past victories, which is good to remind ourselves in the victories. The Bartimaeus, when I went to Jericho, it's just rubble anyway, but you know, my imagination says, I wonder where Bartimaeus sat. You know, you know I, I, he must have been here. You know, and you just picture something, you know. And you know, Bartimaeus is a picture of a blind church meeting in a miraculous place. You hear that? It's like, there's more. Open our eyes of our spirit, there's more. There's more. The spirit man's got to come alive and you'll see that we won't be there begging God, oh God, please, 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 please. No, no, no. God says, I'm going to, I'm going to take you above every storm so you can see that where I am, you can be. And this is the glory that we're going into. This is it, the glory. It's the place of, it's the place of victory. It's the place of victory. It's the place of promise. Jordan is the place of death. And that place is an important place. It's to die to our will, but come alive to his. John said that I may decrease, that you may increase. Are you willing? And I, I, I got to a place where I've just said I'm willing. And, yet, and I've failed a few times in that as well. But I've got up very quickly, especially with my wife giving me a kick in the backside as well. And she said, come on now, you can do it. With God you can do it. And you've got to go through these obstacles and, and break through and, and become a believer that it's not just at, at, at Gilgal all your life and say, oh, well, I'm just there, you know, I just come and I go and I come and go. You know, there's nothing really much I can do. You can do anything through Christ who strengthens you. But it's your desire. The desire, the desire. And in closing, you know, the mantle. He wanted to look like Elijah. You know, when Pastor Neil stood on the big stage of, uh, you know, and the worship went for hours, he had an ability to wait in the presence of God. And I was fairly young in lots of ways, and thought I thought I wasn't, but I was. But I used to watch and say, "I want to be like that. I want to." Just to, to wait for the window because God was doing things in the worship. God was moving in power. God was, and, and sometimes, you know, we can just get up there and say, I've got a word now, it's just all listen to this and all go home. But what if that, if God's presence is here, do you need to preach? Maybe God wants to do something that we can't do. Maybe God is moving. And I've learned to wait on God. You know, wait on God. And when that window's open, and you feel, yes, this is the time. It's the good time. It's the right time. And, I, and I, I thank you for that. That is a really key thing I learned in the spirit. And, and, and I will say this, and I think Pat might prove me, that some people have said to me, and not so much now, but in the past, hey, you pass a meal. I say, yes. <coughs> I'll give... I'll give I give you love to Nancy as well. Thank you. <laughs> it's amazing. It's because you see, you, 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 you're eager to walk into the Spirit. Don't be familiar with what you're carrying. It's awesome. It's amazing. It's wonderful. It's incredible. It is really, really, and it's unexplainable. Don't explain it. Just say it's God. For He gets all the glory. He gets all the praise. He gets all the recognition. Otherwise, you know what? We'll look for a name. No, no, look towards God. And it unlocks heaven. It unlocks the power. And His ability 
Although we can tell the stories, it's his ability. It's not our ability. And you can have this humble experience walking through life and saying, I was there when that dead person was, you know, I told a story in, in, the, um, in the conference where a little lady came up to us and, she, you know, she grabbed hold of my trousers and she wanted me to pray for her, her grandson. It was in a village somewhere up in the mountains. I said, I can't go up there. And I remembered Paul in Acts 19, 11 and 12 said he gave her handkerchiefs. So I gave her a handkerchief with Jesus healed you. And she said, and I said to her, now you just put this on the child and pray and believe. And so through the interpreter, that was it. And so off she went. But when she got back to the village, the child was dead. I rang up my wife and she said, that wasn't a very good prayer, Al. <laughs> I said, it wasn't. You know. But unknown to us, this lady was still on her knees praying over a dead child all night. You see, when faith stops, that's it. But faith kept on working. 10 o'clock the next morning, I was actually buying a pair of shoes in a town before I was going to get on an airplane, and the word came down through the mountains that the little boy jumped up, rose up, he's alive. You see, see, God can do this. Can I have my phone there, Patricia? I think it's in your, your bag here. Sorry. Thank you. Well, I should be in Tanzania right now, but obviously I'm not. No. This happened just last night. A man was here paralyzed completely in his legs and Jesus healed him completely. The lady was blind but Jesus healed her. And it goes on and on and on. And Christopher Elm, the person that I work with in, in Africa, he was telling me, he said, Alan, he said, I've seen Every week we see these miracles. But he said, a little while, not a couple of months ago, he said to me, I've seen something extraordinary. I said, tell me, Christopher, what happened? He said, well, we had this meeting. He said, there was probably 80 odd thousand people there in this stadium. And um, the last night, there was a baptism of the Holy Spirit and thousands were baptized. He said, uh, we were healed and it was amazing. We really rejoiced. And then he said, uh, there was a real kerfuffle in the very back of the, he said, I couldn't see what was going on. I saw all the dust jumping up and down and that, but people were screaming. And he said, there was a, like, there was a few thousand of them at the back there really screaming. And apparently there was a man in that little city that had been born a cripple and he just goes through the town on his, on his, on his uh, elbows. And he came into the meeting and when he came right at the very end when Pastor Christopher was praying for the sick, and all of a sudden, strength came back into his bones. And he jumped up. He started running. And that was what it was about. They were running, running. And they said there was about 5,000 people ran out of the, the, the football stadium all up the street, shouting and screaming as this guy ran. And he said, that was, that was, that, that was just mind-blowing. He said, but we went to the, across, then we go across the other side of the country and do it again. And uh, he said, I got word back, he said, five days later. He said, they kept on bringing people back to the football ground. And there was no one on the football ground. But they would bring a blind person onto the football ground. And night by night, for five nights, people were healed with no nothing. God's presence was still resident. That's inconceivable. We can't take that in. Even, even Christopher said, That's, it's, it's a hard one. But he said, it happens. How big is our God? How big can we dream? How big can we activate? It, what is it? What is it will take us to move forward in the midst of you know, this virus and the problems that we're facing in our nation? I tell you what, it, it, will, it will need a people that would say, I am hungry. A people that would say, I will pray. 
I will not walk away from it. I will turn my switch, my TV set. I will come. I will bow myself. I want God to move. And there is a mantle. It comes from heaven. It's a mantle. It, it, it's the Holy Spirit's power. It wants to fall upon you. It wants to touch you. It wants to really clothe you with, with, with so much anointing power that you will be excited. There will be a fresh joy, a fresh excitement. It won't be just like, a oh, hi, sister, you know, praise God, hallelujah, amen. It, it, it will be, you've got no idea. I just walked into the shopping center. <laughs> God will set you free. God really will set you free. God will. He will. He will. Whoops, sorry. He will. And maybe you're here and you're dry and you've got stones in your hand. God wants to heal you. God will not ever, ever send you away. He says, come. Maybe you're here and you, you know, you, in bygone years, you, 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 you know, you felt God move on you and, and want you to do things. Uh, and you can still talk about that time. But that experience is for now. Maybe you're young and thinking, well, I tell you, what, Jeremiah was young. He, he, he didn't think he could preach because he was too young. But let me tell you, he's written a whole book. Okay? Peter never thought the Jews and the Gentiles could eat together, but he was wrong. Saul thought that he was doing God a favor by killing the Christians, but he was wrong. I tell you, God is going gonna, is gonna to come across us and do things in our lives that we have never seen before. We are going to walk with the Holy Spirit. It is 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 His power, His authority, and He is moving in our lives. And I want to encourage you today. I really want to encourage you today. If, if ever I can say it, I, you know, if I could put a bomb into every heart to explode and say, I'm going to run to the house of prayer. I'm going to run to the house of God. I tell you, it's good. Why did Peter have to get out in the midst of a storm the, the biggest storm of all. You ever thought about that? Because our testimony is, well, you know, Jesus was with me, and I was just in the, oh, it's a beautiful day, in the sand, oh, it was great. And he just said to me, you know, now I'm going to teach you to walk on the water. Oh, really, do you? <laughs> oh, I'm going to have a testimony. Wow. It's going to be awesome. Okay, let's go. Thanks, Jesus. You're just so wonderful to me. He can do that. In the midst of a flipping storm that they couldn't even row in, he says, Come! And when you hear that voice, Come! You become obedient. You take your faith step. You take courage and come. Because you see, every time you do, in the midst of a storm, he says, You see, I'm above this storm, aren't I? You can walk on this storm. And this is for your future, not for your testimony, for your future. So lift up your hands, please. Can we have music or what we have? Do we have music or whatever? Just lift up. Father, we thank you right now for the hearts of people. No matter where we come from, it doesn't matter. What we've done doesn't matter. It's where we're going is important. And Father God, I just thank you right now for these beautiful people, people with a hunger, people with a thirst. If you're here right now and you need Jesus Christ in your life, he's yours. In fact, he's always been yours. Even while you were sinning, he died for you. That's how much love he's got for you. Fisherman and fish, sinners sin. He knows that but he's here to call you. If you're here today and you say, oh, I've been a bit slack and I need this mantle. I need a touch of this mantle. I need a fresh anointing over my life. I want to say, why don't you just, just come? So, oh, you know, I'm just, I tell you, I'm too, I tell you, you're not too old to pray and break through. Two little old 80s, 82 broke through in the Hebrides and revival took place. Because they were anointed. And I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet right now. And if you're sick in your body, 
you can come too. And we're going to pray and believe God for great miracles. But if you need a touch of heaven, if you need a touch of heaven, if you need to say, yeah, I, I, I want this. I want the mantle. I want a fresh touch. I want a joy that is exceedingly above where I am right now that will flood into my being, that will awaken me, that will awaken me, and, and we'll, we'll, I'll be able to put off all the questions that says, oh, I can't tonight because. I can't be not, I, I can't do that. I can't do this. That's, that's not a truth. Just say, no, I'm not doing it. I want God. God is more important. God is more important right now. Quickly, come, 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 come. Let let go of your seat and say, I'm coming. I I want God. I want God to move on me today. I want a fresh move of God. I want the power of the Spirit of God. There is healing in this place. There's miracles in this place. Don't look at me. It's the Holy Spirit. It's His power. He can do what He likes, when He likes. It's faith. Come on, faith, obedience, and courage. To move through. Don't stay at Gilgal. Move through. Don't listen to the religious. Move through. Break through. Break through. Break through. Break through. Break through, brother. Break through. Break through. Break through is coming. Break through is on our lives. Come on. Start to worship in the spirit. Come on. Worship. 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 Worship.